Hey everyone, it's Shane Hennessy here, and in this video I want to bring you through my arrangement of Beyonce's Love on Top for fingerstyle guitar. This is one of the most requested tracks that I get on YouTube for a tutorial, so I said I'd finally make a tutorial video and explain all the parts of it. So this version I'm going to show you today is going to follow the video that was taken of me playing this arrangement in my friend Zunke Meinen's house in Dresden in Germany. You might be familiar with that YouTube uh, video already. Um, there are a couple of different versions but I'm going to follow that one in particular. The only change is that in that video I'm tuned a half a step down. Uh, in this video I'm in standard tuning so E A D G B E as normal. So uh, just to tell you from the outset this is not an easy tune to play. I find this hard to play. There are a lot of very unusual chords in it and a lot of very unusual things that I do that you may not have come across in other fingerstyle guitar pieces before now. Uh, but we'll tackle them as we go through the tune. So the way we'll do it is uh, we'll look at the chords first, we'll look at the intro section, we'll look at the verse section, then we'll look at the pre-chorus which moves up higher on the guitar and then we'll look at the chorus uh, which then modulates into different keys. Uh, the chorus starts off in C, and then if you're familiar with the tune, it goes into C sharp, D, D sharp or E flat, and then into E. Um, so we're gonna cover all that in that order. So hope you enjoy it, here's the lesson. Just before we dive into this lesson, I want to let you know that there is a tab available for this on musicnotes.com. I wrote the tab myself. It is as accurate as I can possibly make it. Um, so if you'd like to get the tab to follow along with this lesson, you can pick that up on musicnotes.com and there's a link to get that tab underneath this video in the description. Also, I've been doing more of these tutorial videos recently for some of my guitar arrangements. Um, I did one recently for my arrangement of Mr. Blue Sky by ELO. I also did one for my arrangement of Say So by Doja Cat. If you want any more tutorials, let me know in the comments and I'll make a tutorial for any of my arrangements that you might like. And lastly, I have a teaching channel if you're interested in it over on truefire.com. It's called the Fretboard Atlas. It's for anywhere from, you know, beginners to advanced players. I cover an awful lot of topics on the channel, including arranging for the guitar, how to start playing fingerstyle from scratch, um, things like you know common chord progressions and strumming patterns for beginners all the way up to like advanced arrangement techniques and reharmonizations for advanced players and everything in between. So if you're interested in that check out the fretboard atlas over on truefire.com there's a link in the description. So let's get on to the lesson. The tune is in C and the first chord that we play is a C major 7. So when I start off the tune I play this so what I'm doing there is I'm holding a C major 7. If you're familiar with the caged plus system, that's a C major 7 as an A major 7 shape. It's up here in the 3rd fret, 5th fret, 4th fret, 5th fret. And I get the bass line here. And two hits like that. Now, here's a chord you've probably never played before. You might be thinking, what's that? This chord is a D augmented 7 chord over an F sharp. Now this is something I learned for the sake of this video. I think of this as a D chord in my head. So uh, if we were to break that down, my thumb is on the F sharp here, uh, on the 2nd fret, 6th string. Then we move over, we jump over to the 4th string, that's an F sharp on the 4th fret. Then we've got an A sharp or a B flat on the third fret on the third string. And then we've got this C note as well. And uh, that's on the first fret on the B string or on the second string. So when you play those together, F sharp, F sharp, A sharp, and C, that is what gives you your D augmented seven. It's also got an E on the top, so you could think of it as an augmented nine chord as well. So don't want to confuse you too much. If that doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. Just learn the chord shape and play it. So that's it. Strange kind of a sound, but in context it works. And the bass line, with my middle finger here, I go like this. So I go from the B up to the C, that's the second fret on this fifth string, up to the third fret, then down to the F sharp. So all together, very crunchy chord out of context. That all then resolves down to 
an F major 7. So if I play that in context, C major 7 first. Your augmented 7 chord. Then roll through that F major 7 chord. Same idea there with the right hand. The bass line. Backbeat coming in. Then we play an F chord, it's technically an F major 7, with the G in the bass. 4 5 chord is a really, really nice way to, uh, to get back to your 1 chord. But in this case, we don't just play the 4 5 chord, which is F over G, we also bring it up 3 frets. So we bring it up to A flat over B flat. So this is like a passing chord on the way to the 1 chord again, the C chord. Uh, so, just to go over that again, that's the 4-5 chord, F over G, then we've got A flat over B flat, it's like a flat 6 over flat 7, and then back to the C major 7 chord again. So to go through all of that again, we start off with the C major 7, down to your, uh, your D augmented 7 over F sharp. down to F major 7, then up to F over G, the 4-5 chord, then your A flat over B flat, and now we repeat more or less the same thing again. Now at this F major 7 chord here, I bring this all the way up to this F major 7, then down to this. So I, I, what I usually do there, I suppose, is F major 7, E minor 7, D minor 7, like that. So all the way up here on the 8th fret, down to E minor 7, down again, D minor 7, and then this to finish off. So this again is your 4-5 chord, F over G. And I've got that high G note as well. And then I lift off this first finger. That gives me that sound, kind of a slightly more resolved sound. And then. Uh, so what's going on there is I'm coming into the melody for the verse. So that's kind of starting with your pinky, which is a sort of an unusual thing to do in fingerstyle guitar, where you would lead with your pinky um, so low down on the guitar. Usually you would use one of your, maybe your middle or your ring finger, but in this case we have to use the pinky in order that we can get this bar ready for the next chord into the C major 7. So just to go over the intro once more. Seven chord, F major seven, four five chord, three up, C major seven, augmented seven, F major seven, up the guitar, E minor seven, seven D minor seven, and then you can play this. So sometimes I'll come down off that D minor 7, A flat major 7, so that's 4th fret, 5th fret, 5th fret, 4th fret, the 4-5 chord. Like that. And remember, lead with the pinky. And that brings us in nicely into the C major 7 chord. So, that's the intro to the tune. Let's take a look now at the verse. So as we covered in the intro, we lead in with the pinky up to the A, then a hammer on from the D to the E, and that is all built into that C major 7 as an A major 7 shape. Then the bass comes in, bom, bom, bom. so uh, just to go through that again, and then this. So those are octaves. Um, lower octaves on the guitar. You might be more familiar, you know, if you play like that George Benson style, you might be familiar with playing like 
those kind of higher octaves on the guitar. This is the same idea, but we're down lower. So we've got a low C and a high C, low D and high D, low E and a high E. So from there, so from there what's happening is we're going back into that D augmented 9 chord that we talked about at the start, or augmented 7. And there's a lot of kind of hand gymnastics going on here to get it smooth. So once you come off the octaves, I would instantly switch to using your thumb here on the F sharp, your little finger on the F sharp, which is the fourth fret on the D string, your middle finger on the third fret of the G string or the third string, and then this, the, the index finger on the first fret, which leaves your ring finger free to hammer on to that melody note. And, it, and it's, it's a bit weird what you have to do with your finger here, but you've got to get the bass uh, to kind of go from that B up to the C, back down to the F sharp again, uh, which sounds really weird out of context, but when you play it, uh, so what you may have seen there is that I go, I use this finger that I've just hammered on with to then jump over to this C note in the bass. And then uh, after that, I'm getting confused now myself. Yeah, so then I let the melody speak just a little bit. And what you'll notice there to really accentuate the melody is that I'm rolling through the other strings on the way up to the first string, but I'm muting all of them. So I'm getting, I'm not going like this. I'm going like this. So you hear there, that sound is going on in the background. And that just adds to the feeling of the music overall. Uh, so up to there. After that chord, we use that note, that C, as kind of pivot, um, to land in on our F major 7 chord. So that F major 7 chord has the thumb here on the 1st fret, then we've got the little finger, 3rd fret, then we've got these two middle fingers, they hammer on at the same time. There. So once I land down, that's the, the total movement. C. In like that. That C note leads down to the F in the bass. And then that's backing off the melody. Bam, 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 bam. That's what's happening. Now, we move to again, a slightly unusual chord for most guitar players. This is a form of A flat major seven chord. So we've got this low sort of information. It's got an A flat, a C, and a G. So that spells out to our ear, we've got the three and the seven. So our ear can make sense that it's an A flat major seven sound. And we've got that C note in the melody. And after that chord, back to the 4-5 chord, the F over G, and the melody flicks up from the C note up to the D. It's a hammer on there, a little flick with your, um, with your pinky. So then that brings us back to our C major 7. So that's a huge amount of info there, let's go over it all again in context. So when we come out of the intro section, into our C major 7, octaves, into our augmented 7 chord. Into our F major 7 chord. Into our A flat major 7 chord. F over G. 
back into our C major 7 chord again. Same thing again. Then, when we get to the F major 7, we do this. Okay, so that's kind of a, a slightly easier, but it's a little bit of a workout for your first finger here. So when we get to that F major 7. So that's F major 7, and then it's that F, E, F, E, it's first fret to the open string. And then we play that bass line, A, C, C sharp, D. So F major 7. Up to the D. Then that brings us into the pre-chorus um, section. So, uh, playing the pre-chorus then. A lot of stretching going on with the hands here. So you kind of have to be careful. You may not be able to play these chords immediately the first time you try and, and uh, play this tune. So uh, the first chord we play is essentially a D minor sort of sound, D minor seven. Um, but the way we, we finger it is like this. We have to use our middle finger on the fifth fret, fifth string. Ring finger, then the, the, the third finger. That goes on the fifth fret on the third string. Pinky on the uh, sixth fret, second string. And then our index finger starts on the third fret, but it slides up like that. So that's a tough movement to do. That, that's kind of a killer as well. So that brings us from the D minor 7 sound. This is a G7 chord with your melody going up from G to A. And again, another little flick there for the melody. Be careful of the bass here as well. Be careful, make sure you get the G and the D. Okay, same thing again here with the with the, the awkward stretch. And what's happening along with that stretch is that the bass here is going from B to E. So you're starting on the low E. So then you're hitting C, D, A7. So that's like 8th fret, 10th fret, A7. And a little, tiny little kind of hammer on there. Now we do our octave trick again, but instead we do it up the guitar. Like that. So to go back over the pre-chorus section again, we start with our awkward D minor 7. there when I'm hitting the octaves I'm using my thumb pick and my, my index finger to pick them both out. Now there's something I should talk about as well. That D minor 7 that I played that time, the melody is different. It's nothing's perfect but it's worth it. So. Okay, very jazzy. So what's happening there is we're doing that initial awkward slide again. Getting that A in the bass. Then we're shifting over essentially to playing a D minor 9 chord. So that's those, uh, if you took the inside four strings, 5th fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret, 5th fret. Then extend it out to that G note on top. That bass drops down from an A to an A flat. Back to your G7 again. So again, that's uh, your melody there. G up to A, D, E, G. 
same as the first time. That's also the same. And then. Now, here's a weird one. This is a triple octave. So instead of just playing C, D, E as a double octave, now we're playing it as a triple. So, if you find this one hard to get your head around, start with the initial octave, C and C, and then on the same fret as your little finger here, play the note that's on the uh, sixth string. I bet. So your stretch there is over three different frets. And then back to your 4-5 chord. And that's the pre-chorus. So just to go through that one more time, the awkward D minor 7, bass drop down, G7, E minor 7, into the chorus section. So that's a lot already. Uh, prepare to have your mind melted even more by what happens in the chorus and I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize for how difficult this arrangement is. Uh, but it's fun to play once you get it under your fingers. So we'll now take a look at the chorus section. So now coming into the chorus of this arrangement of Love on Top, this is what we do. Um, we're coming out of that 4-5 chord. What's happened there is I didn't play it particularly well, but that's G A C up here, single notes, uh, eighth fret, tenth fret, eighth fret, and then I slide this kind of major shape here. You'd know it as like a D chord kind of a shape. I slide that from the tenth fret all the way up to the twelfth fret. So I end up with the notes on the twelfth fret, and the thirteenth fret, and twelfth fret. That's a G, a C, and an E. And then I come in with. So let's start that off again. So that's uh, what kind of gives us the, the feeling. So slide it in, slide it back out, slide up the sixth string. Then we play this. This is a C chord, and we use our little finger to kind of make it a, it sounds like a C6 kind of a sound, but it's actually just in the melody. So I'm using my thumb here this, uh, to get the C in the bass. Then I'm getting the F sharp in the bass. Okay, so that's like the, the kind of the tritone um, of, of C. And that's, that is more or less giving us the same sound as this. It's not exact the same note for note, but it's very similar to it. Um, Functionally, they kind of fulfill the same role, these two chords. So it's your uh, C chord, and then you can think of it as C6 over F sharp, if you want to think of it that way. Um, so. That brings us then to this F major 7. This is an unusual F major 7. You're probably not used to playing it that way. But this is like your standard, imagine this like an A shape making an F chord, like that. The only addition is this note here, the major 7, this is on the 12th fret. So that's what we add in to make it an F major 7. Uh, so just from the start again. So after this F major 7, switch to a different voice and we switch to kind of a more recognizable major seven, it's it's the A major seven shape. So that is the same as your A major seven chord down here, but we play it here on the eighth fret, it gives us F major seven. And luckily the melody is built into the pinky. Now this is a bar across the middle four strings, so frets 10, 10, 10, 10. That is the same as the 4-5 chord. This is a higher voicing of the 4-5 chord, which is F major over G. 
So, uh, in context, slide up, C, C6 over the F sharp, F major 7, another voicing of F major 7, the 4 5 chord, F over G, then we switch to this. So this is the same shape as that first awkward D minor. That big annoying shape. We're playing that again now, only it's up here. It's a little bit easier to fret because the fret spacing is smaller. So from the 10th fret on the 5th string, uh, we've got that note there, that's G. We skip the 4th string. We go to the 10th fret on the 3rd string, uh, which gives us an F. Uh, we go to the 11th fret on the 2nd string, that gives us a B flat or an A sharp. Uh, and then we go to the, what is it, the 8th fret on the 1st string, and that gives us a C. And the melody is built into that shape. So we just flick between. So, uh, to make that movement more obvious, 5 over, then here, and then I play this. Now this is the part that needs the most practice out of anything in this tune. Hitting that C in the bass and then doing this. Knowing, the, the way I do this is I look at the 12th fret and I'm thinking 12, 10, 12, 15, like that, E, D, E, G. And if you can do it in one movement, it's even better. Like that, rather than kind of to try and keep it more fluid. Same thing again, back to the C. So uh, just to run through that quickly again, that's the C chord. C6 over F sharp again. And again, this is all the pinky getting the melody. A lot of hammer ons going on here. All the hammering there is happening from that shape onto the 10th fret. Then again, we have another voicing of the F over G chord, the 4 over 5. So that is where you've got the G here on the 10th fret, a second string, that gives us G. Then we've got an F, an A, and a C, like that. That's on the 10th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret, like that. So again, in context. what I do there is I go down to the A flat major 7 and back down to the F over G. It would be nice to be able to stay up there to go but I actually think it suits the arrangement more uh, to go from there back into your C major 7. So that's A flat major 7 back to the F over G into C major 7. So there's a huge amount in that, as I said, it's a difficult arrangement, a lot of weird stuff going on, but that is um, the entirety of the chorus. Now the important thing, as I said at the beginning of the video with this chorus, is that we are going to modulate that later on in the song. We play it initially in C, and then in C sharp, and then in D, and then in D sharp, and then in E. So make sure that you're not hitting any open strings when you're playing this chorus, because if you do, it's gonna sound really bad when you start changing keys. The whole chorus I kind of intentionally designed not to have any open strings because it changes key. So all of the notes have to be fretted and then muted.
brings us into sort of just our, our kind of bridge, just chordal bridge between this piece and the next verse, if you're going to play a next verse. Um, I think I did in the video, from memory, I played kind of a second verse and then went back into the chorus. When I come out of that um, the A flat major 7, 10 to the 4, 5 chord, we then go to um, same as the intro. Up the chords. So that's then A flat major 7, B flat major 7, and that shape is movable. So it's 4th uh, fret on the 6th string, skip a string, then you've got the 5th fret on the 3rd string, 5th fret on the 4th string as well, and then you've got the 4th uh, fret on the 2nd string. Move all of that up 2 frets, move it all up 2 frets again. So that's A flat major 7, B flat major 7, C major 7, like that. What you may see me do in other videos is that I, I might play those same changes, as in I play the same chords, but I don't necessarily play them in the same place. So you might see me doing something like... Something like that, you know, going through the, the, the cycle of the changes. I kind of make that up every time as I'm going along, depending on what I'm feeling. So if you found another version where I'm playing something different, I am sticking to the same C, D augmented 7, F major 7, F over G, more or less. Um, so that brings us back into the... Back into the verse section. And it stays the same. Then into the pre-chorus is exactly the same. Same as earlier on. Then the chorus is the same as earlier on, the first one in C. But the change is gonna happen at the end. So what I do there is, when I finish up on that 4-5 chord, where I'd usually go down to those low chords, I stay on it instead, and I kind of, I stab them, so... Like that. That's the left. And we move there into C sharp. So this is the start of the modulation. Now the good news is, if you've learned the fingering properly for the chorus, it's exactly the same for the next couple of choruses. The hard part is, you might be running out of neck on your guitar. So if you don't have a cutaway on your guitar, this part is going to be exceptionally difficult to play. If you do have a cutaway on your guitar, it's still going to be exceptionally difficult to play, but you might be able to move your hand a little bit freer than um, if you didn't have a cutaway. So coming from that 4-5 chord, that's F over G, we go to C sharp. Straight C sharp, that's C sharp as an E shape up here, all along the 9th fret. Again, we're moving up into, I suppose that would be a D sharp augmented chord over G. Up to a G major 7, like that. Up to, uh, I suppose that would be your, uh, what, your F sharp over G sharp, like that, or G flat over A flat, um, all along the 11th fret. And again, as I said, this is the part that needs all the work. Now you're aiming for a C sharp in the bass. And now I'm looking at fret number 13, fret number 11, 13, 16. So I'm trying to aim to get that right. And that's going to be the hardest part of the whole thing. Uh, From this 4-5 chord, this is your F sharp over G sharp, we're going to D. 
And you'll notice there that my thumb generally from this point doesn't want to go over to the fifth string. So instead I bring in my middle finger to cover, and this is a bit weird, but it covers uh, three strings in total. This is kind of, this is a really tough thing to do. Uh, so you're covering here the 11th fret on the fifth string, fourth string, and third string, but you're also fretting the 12th fret on the fourth string. So this is the total chord, 11, 12, 11, excuse me, 12, 13, 12, 13, 11, if you're looking at the frets. So that is um, like an A flat, D, G flat, B and D, I suppose, or if you're talking in sharps, that's uh, G sharp, D, F sharp, B, D, like that. So. Up to your G major seven. Again, your four or five chord, that's G over A. D in the bass, aiming at the 14th fret, 12, 14, 17. <laughs> I'm finding it tough today. E flat. And I put my guitar out of tune doing that. Again here, 15, 13, 15, 18. And uh, I hope, if you're still watching the video and haven't thrown the guitar in the bin, um, that uh, if you're looking at these chord changes and thinking, well, what are these? It's the same as what I explained earlier, talking about C, you know, the C to the augmented, or uh, down to the, uh, sorry, excuse me, the C chord to the C6 over F sharp uh, to F, major 7 then to F over G and it's the same movements that your hand is doing but everything is one fret up so when we get to E flat now you have some relief when you get to here I hit an E chord there, and I hit the low E as well at the same time. Okay, that's kind of the last awkward chord I play. Then from here, I bring everything down 12 frets. So this brings us down to a kind of a more normal chord, if you want to call it that. This is a bit like, um, it's a type of a B minor chord. So you've got B, D, A, D, E. So that's uh, second fret, open string, second fret, third fret, open string. So after I play this, uh, I stop playing that higher melody in octaves. I play it in uh, sixths instead. Uh, or almost sixths. Uh, so you've got G sharp, F sharp, G sharp, B. And you've also got B, A, B, E. Down to an E chord. That's B up to C sharp. Okay, that's, that's like an A7 over A sharp. So that's like your A7 with a B flat or an A sharp in the bass. Over to A major 7. So uh, I've lost myself there now. Yeah. Yeah, when I finish it off, I play after the A major seven. So what I do is I play, it's implied that it's a B major, but I'm not actually playing that fourth fret. So I'm playing the low B, A, C, and E. A, C sharp, and E on top. And again, the pinky is getting a work out there. And in through an E major chord at the end. So, that, that was a lot. There was a lot of lesson in that lesson. 
Um, there are a lot of very weird chord shapes, uh, but hopefully uh, by slowing down the video and using the tab and uh, you know just sheer perseverance, you'll be able to figure it all out. I hope that I've explained it as clearly as I can. As you can see, I find it tough to play as well when I haven't been playing it a lot, and I haven't been playing it a lot in the last while. Um, so if you have any questions about it, any sections that don't make sense or you'd like more of an explanation about or anything about the, the fingering of the chords or anything like that, just let me know and I'll be happy to make a follow-up video with any questions or leave them down in the comments as well. And uh, we'll take it from there. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope to see you over on the Fretboard Atlas and stay tuned for the next tutorial.